So with several Star Wars shows on the horizon that will continue telling the story of the galaxy around the time of the Mandalorian, I figured now is a good time to take a look at exactly what's going on with the sort of decline of the Galactic Empire in this period of time. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, head down below and hit that subscribe button. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that one of the first videos I posted was a video comparing the fall of the Empire in Legends and Canon, and if you go back and watch that video, you can tell I'm not super happy with the way it's handled in Canon. It seemed a little too fast and really rushed through the process of the collapse of a galactic government. Some of my major critiques were things like Imperial military equipment seeming to vanish overnight, and the power of the Empire waning way too fast for a military of that size. Well, I wanted to take another look at that two years later and actually sort of look at what Disney's done to kind of fix these concerns because I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. And by the way, Disney has done quite a bit, mostly thanks to The Mandalorian, but I'm looking forward to what we're going to see when The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, and Rangers of the New Republic all come together. So let's talk about exactly what's going on with the New Republic and the Galactic Empire at around this time. So, as many of us know, the Galactic Empire officially surrendered at the Battle of Jakku, signing a document called the Galactic Concordance. In practical terms, the Galactic Concordance officially ended the Galactic Civil War with the Empire's formal surrender, with Imperial factions being sort of limited and sort of almost acting like outlaw groups. Now, initially, the impression this gave is that within two years of the signing of the Galactic Concordance, all evidence of the Empire was basically wiped from the galaxy. The Mandalorian has shown us that that simply isn't the case. What we've seen now with these new shows is that the Empire, while they may have formally surrendered at the Battle of Jakku, didn't cease to exist. Maybe the formal command structure of the Empire was greatly shattered and the highest echelons of this command structure surrendered, but elements of the Imperial military and Imperial command still continued persisting on and fighting against the New Republic in small pockets. This is where we get things like what we see under the command of Moff Gideon, an Imperial Remnant. These Imperial Remnants, usually under the command of Imperial Warlords, are, well, not unified, still very serious threats to regions of space. They're generally small Imperial fleets, or maybe even individual capital ships, under the command of Imperial leaders with a small force of old Imperial military units under their command. It's a blessing for the galaxy that these units are not unified. Instead, they seem to operate on their own sort of individual basis, not fighting any unified fronts, but instead really just trying to do what's best for themselves personally. For example, one of these warlords may directly attack another if they feel like that one is a threat to their territory. Basically, each of them become squabbling remnants of a unified state. This shows that the Empire, while maybe on paper ceased to exist at the Battle of Jakku, in a very practical sense continued on far, far longer. But there is still a significant threat from the Imperial Warlords as a whole. While they are scattered and fighting amongst each other, they really don't pose that much of a threat to the rest of the galaxy. If they were to unify under one strong leader, perhaps someone by the name of Thrawn, they would pose a very real threat to the New Republic. That's why one of the things I've seen thrown around over the past year seems to suggest that all of these live-action Star Wars series are going to converge into sort of a television sort of reimagining of the original Thrawn trilogy of books where Thrawn comes back and reunifies the Empire and leads a massive assault against the New Republic. I very much hope to see that on screen for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest ones is it would show that while the Empire was neutered at the Battle of Jakku, it wasn't completely shut down, and that the Empire still poses a threat, even this many years after their official surrender, which makes perfect sense seeing the absolute size of the faction. All in all, though, a lot of this comes down to Imperial warlords like Moff Gideon, who play a crucial role in any ongoing sort of Imperial presence in the galaxy. They're very different from the Empire as a whole that you'd be familiar with from the original trilogy, and if you want to learn more about Imperial Warlords, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think it's a good idea for the Empire to still be around in some fashion this many years after the Battle of Jakku. Do you want to see Thrawn come back, reunify these Imperial Remnants, and lead a charge against the New Republic, or do you really think the Empire should be dead and gone by the time of the Mandalorian, and keeping them around is just holding on to something that should be let go of? And if you have something you want to see me cover in Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments. 
And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.